through the air and landed on the house with the others. It stomped up to the roof peak and bounded onto the chimney. The other five creatures were small and hunched over. Their long arms dangled at their sides, and as they walked, their shoulders rocked like a seesaw. Megan continued to watch them until she realized what they were. Monkeys. It seemed impossible. Monkeys had escaped the zoo and were climbing over a house in her neighborhood. One monkey leaped from the edge of the rooftop. Megan had a clear view of its silhouette in front of the moon. Its feet hit the gutter of the adjacent rooftop with a clang, and the other monkeys followed, effortlessly jumping the distance between the houses. No, she said as she stared in disbelief. Nuh-uh. The monkeys jumped to the next house, and the next, and then disappeared into the shadows. Silence and stillness descended over the neighborhood. Noah. Megan hurried down the ladder and rushed into the house. Her older brother would know what to do. She flung open his bedroom door, startling him out of his sleep. What? Noah gasped. His hair stood out in all directions, reminding Megan of sun rays in a cartoon. Noah, outside, she blurted out. Quick. What? Now! She ran back through the house. Noah chased her outside. They dashed across the yard and climbed up to Fort Scout. What are you? Megan snatched the binoculars and shoved them at her brother. Here! Here what? Look through them! She pointed toward the rooftops. Over there! I saw monkeys! Megan! I saw monkeys on the rooftops! Her older brother looked her up and down. You're nuts. Just see for yourself. Noah peered through the binoculars. He searched the landscape for more than a minute without saying a word. Then he handed the binoculars back to his sister and said, Yep, you're nuts. Noah, I saw them, I'm telling you. He climbed down the ladder saying, What are you doing out here so late anyway? You'll be so dead if Mom catches you out here. He reached the ground and turned to run toward the house, calling, Come inside! Megan watched him run back into the house and close the door on the night. She turned her attention back to the rooftops and her neighbor's yards. She studied the shadowy landscape for nearly an hour, but nothing unusual happened. I know I saw them, she said, trying to convince herself. She climbed down from the fort, returned to the house, dropped into bed, and stared at the ceiling. She couldn't sleep. At two o'clock in the morning, she rolled out of bed and sat at her desk. Nervous, she drummed her fingers on the desktop and shifted her eyes. Her gaze stopped on a single book standing on its edge. A diary. A recent gift from her mother, the diary lacked its first entry. Megan snatched it up and opened to the first page. The binding was so stiff that she had to press the cover down before it would lie flat. She stared at the page. It was ridiculously colorful, red paper with purple lines and blue stars in the corners. In class, she'd learned about brainstorming, scribbling down ideas as quickly as possible. Her teacher had said it was a way to make sense of something that was difficult to figure out. Megan grabbed a pencil, chewed on the eraser for a moment, and started to write. Date, July 18th. Time, 11 p.m. I went outside because I forgot my stupid glasses in Fort Scout again. When I climbed up... She wrote for an hour. Then she closed the diary, set it aside, turned off the light, and climbed back into bed. An hour later, she fell asleep without knowing that she'd just completed the first pages of a journal that would eventually alter the course of the world. After the Discovery October 2nd Fourteen red-eyed leaf frogs hopped down the long zoo corridor, jumping and tumbling over one another as they scrambled forward. Pop, 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 pop! The sticky pads of their feet slapped the floor and sounded like exploding miniature firecrackers. A hundred aquariums.